Good day to all hobbyists who work with renewable energy. Let me introduce myself. My name is Henk Pais. This is a project that I did in which I used an old Fisher & Parkle motor and turned it into a counter-rotating generator. Basic generation. In general, when you increase the speed of a generator and keep the magnetic flux and the length of the conductor the same, then the voltage increases linearly with the speed. Now, if we keep the same construction of a generator, but rotate both the original rotor and also the stator at the same speed, but in opposite direction, then for the same current carrying capability and the doubling of the voltage, you expect to generate twice the power. Here is an indication of how the small generator can be used with twin blades. The blades can be on opposite sides or on the same side. This is also applicable for water turbines and other drive systems. Now for our project. Counter rotation where the permanent magnet rotor goes in one direction and the original armature in the opposite direction. The rotor and armature sections as Fisher and Paykel installs them in their washing machines. Here are some solid work drawings generated from sketches. The bearing adapter to allow for counter rotation, a bracket for carbon brushes, an adapter ring and a mounting plate. The modified armature. When it comes out of the washing machine, there is a large plastic hub, of which the leftovers can be seen just below the slip rings, which had to be cut out. The central shaft and plastic was preserved and machined to house the slip rings. I think that next time I will machine a new central shaft and new bearings and not use the original plastic body, as this will give less friction, better slip rings and less noise. A plastic sleeve was made to fit between the slip rings and the metal reinforcement bars in the plastic and grooves were provided for the wires. Slip rings were fitted on at the same time with a wire underneath each slip ring. Then the wires fitted to the original connection lugs. I kept the original windings which resulted in a higher voltage. Other winding arrangements can be done as others have shown on the internet. An adapter was machined to suspend the armature rotor from the top drive assembly. The carry cap has internal threads onto which the adapter sleeve fits. Two plates were manufactured with locating rings welded to them, which houses the bearings. Initially threaded rods were used and when the dimensions were established, struts were made to keep them at fixed distances. You can see the adapter sleeve with the two bolts sticking up, to which the generator assembly will be connected from underneath. Here you can see the mounting plates and generator assembly. This can be fitted to any drive you like. This is the brush assembly, which is fitted onto the main mounting plate. Whose wife will allow them to do this on their dining room table? Here it shows the original threaded rods which were replaced with struts. The bottom shows the mounting adapter for the construction stand and this could also be used for the top of a pipe mast. This, this design is for wind turbines with blades on the same side. The top pulleys are for simulating turbines where we connect the test motors and belts. Here it is located for use with a vertical axis wind turbine. To be able to work on a generator and for testing purposes a stand was needed. The generator with two transmission simulation motors fitted and cabling.
The generator loading test box showing the lamp holders for three phase power with the instrument test connections on the side. There are different configurations with lamps, sometimes in series and other times in parallel. Initial test setup. The variable speed drives on the top right are used to simulate different wind speeds in opposite direction. It was found that digital multimeters were not really suitable for this situation, as the variable speed drive produces harmonics which interfere with the meters. This table shows the results of a test run, where the speed in RPM is the combined speed of both rotors. CR numbers indicate different test runs and the theoretical failures based on the motor constant on the right. These results are used to graph the test and compare them with the theoretical value. The results set out in a graph. The orange line shows the calculated theoretical values. It shows the relation between speed and the resulting voltage. The output voltage is reduced with a higher load as can be expected as there is winding and slippering resistance. The result of a power test run. Once the test was run, the results were converted into usable data as in this indicative table where we show the power generated for the three phase phases and the total average power. The total power is larger than the original motor ratings which was 350 watts. This graph shows various average power values for multiple loads and the three phase combined figures. As you can see there are some kinks in the graph which are partially due to the difficulty of setting the speed and the effect of using one set of halogen lamps and filament lamps with a low load. The readings were taken by setting the RPM on each drive and getting them as close as possible to the combined speed required. The setting on the front of the variable speed drive is sensitive and it is not always possible to get the exact speed. Thank you for your interest and you could contact me via email as shown.